Looking at my demographics, I'm willing to bet that Battlefield 2042 isn't your first Battlefield game. I've been playing Battlefield since Bad Company 1 on the Xbox 360, and throughout the generations of Battlefield games I used to have a decently sized friend group who I would squad up with. Some of my fondest gaming memories are those times when we were able to get a full four-man squad together and just tear through the enemy team. We were all super excited for Battlefield 2042. Battlefield was finally coming back to the modern era. My friends, who had kind of fallen out of favour with the Battlefield games over the lifespan of Battlefield 5, would be coming back. We were going to squad up and dominate once more. I remember scheduling time with them to jump onto the 2042 beta and just being so excited to finally join up with them all again. And it, it was terrible. We all hated it. The game was an absolute mess. My friends, they had finally decided they were done with Battlefield games and moved on to greener pastures. And I can't really blame them for it. Between Battlefield 5's disappointment and then the build up and horrible payoff of Battlefield 2042, it was a massive letdown from DICE. I'm not going to start listing everything that was and still is wrong with the game. Plenty of other YouTubers have already done this in detail. Either way, I got the game on release and despite its gaping flaws, I still had fun with it, but unfortunately I had to do it on my own. Battlefield is a team game and playing it solo is just not as fun as having a squad of friends. Meanwhile, teamwork seems to be a complete afterthought by most of the community, myself included to some regards. You can blame the lack of class system, or bad teammates, or the 128 player count, but at some point you need to admit that it's just more convenient for a player to run around capturing whatever objective they see fit, or playing the game exactly how they want it. Players, especially when they're strangers, aren't really incentivized to cooperate, and I think that even though previous Battlefield games had systems to try and promote good team play, I think most players still ended up tending to go do their own thing. Yeah, it was nice to get bonus XP in Battlefield 4 by following squad orders, and it was great being able to use your squad points in Battlefield 5 so that the squad leader could order in squad bonuses, but the incentives were never really your primary thought. The real reason you should work with your squad is it's absolutely critical if you want to have a large effect on the games you play, especially so in Battlefield 2042. I'm sure you've been in those games where you keep bumping into the same four enemies, and no matter what you do you can almost never keep them off the point. Yeah, you might be able to kill one or two of them, but the others will just come down upon you like hawks. This is usually a four man friend group and it's clearly the best way to have a large effect on the battlefield. On the other hand, I'm sure you've also tried to capture an objective in 2042 solo. It takes an absolute age. And if it's an objective that has two or more points, there's almost no chance of you capturing it yourself. So I had a thought. Can I play in a way that forces my squad mates to cooperate with me? Can I be so helpful and present that not playing as a squad just seems like a dumb idea? So I had to sit down and wrote up some rules that I was going to strictly follow every game to see if I could force my teammates to play with me. So here's the plan. I'm no longer playing for my team. Win or lose, I don't care. All I care about is my squad mates. Ideally, I want to choose a squad mate who is not just camping and instead find a squad mate who appears to be PTFO. They are my captain. Where they go, I go. I can ping to encourage them to go towards certain things, but I should not go off alone. If I am right around the corner from objective A which is being captured, but my squad mate wants to go to A, then I best have brought my running shoes. This doesn't mean I need to be hugging them or sitting on their lap, I just need to be in the general area and constantly keeping an eye on them at all times. I can change which squad mate is my captain. The hope is that everyone on the squad starts to see the benefits of being together. But if I'm with two squad mates and they decide to go off in separate directions then I still need to choose someone to follow. The hope is that this encourages my captain to start spawning on me, and since half of the squad is in one location, this encourages other squad members to start spawning on both of us too, hopefully also seeing the effects of strong teamwork. I can only spawn on squad mates, or on points or beacons which my squad mates are very close to. If I do not spawn on squad mates, then my priority should be to get into their vicinity as soon as possible. 
This also means that if none of my teammates have spawned, then I should wait for them to choose where they want to go, spawning on them once they've chosen. If they go down, then I must do everything in my power to clear the area and res them. If they die and I'm unable to res them, then I should play risky, trying to avenge my fallen comrades. Unless of course I'm sure that they're planning on spawning with me. The plan here is to get back to them as soon as possible. Ideally, what I hope will happen is that once my squad mates see that they're doing way better as a squad, they'll continue spawning on me and realise that sticking together is helping them perform way better. So I played like this for a bunch of Conquest Exodus and regular Conquest games. Before I go over my findings, let me give you some tips that I found massively encouraged my squad to start cooperating, which should help you make this gameplay style work. For the love of god, change your frag grenade out for a smoke grenade. In fact, even if you aren't planning on playing as a squad, do this. I could make a whole video on why, but to keep it brief, it helps keep your squad members alive. It gives you cover if you have to res them, and it can encourage your squad mates to push objectives if they're nervous about open space. You spawn with two of them and I think I used them almost every life. I really don't think this challenge would have worked without smoke grenades. Extra points if you use the smoke grenade launcher. Bring something that benefits your team like the ammo pack or medkit. Personally I found the ammo pack to be super useful since it had the added benefit of replenishing my smoke grenades. You want to be able to demonstrate what you are doing by being overly supportive. Drop these whenever your squad mates are around or in need. Playing Fork or Angel also has a cooperative element since you can heal and give ammo respectively. However, now I know this one's going to be a controversial one because it sounds like it goes against everything that I'm trying to promote. But if you want to play like this, I would actually not recommend playing a medic class. That being Angel, Fork or Crawford or as of 3.2 Irish. Yes, you can revive much faster and most of them come with a tool used for cooperation, but I found that I frequently lost my squad mates because I was getting too carried away reviving other members of my team. If you can control the urge to res everyone, then using these specialists is fine, but I personally couldn't help being distracted. Also this way you'll only be called for squad mate downs when they press the request medic button instead of teammate downs. So as soon as you hear the please res me sound, you'll know that a squad mate is in need. You can ping a lot of things in this game and since 3.1 you can actually spot enemies with this. You can ping with the Q key or the R1 or right bumper when using a controller. Here's a list of what they can be used for. Ping objectives to let your squad know what objectives you think they should focus on. The number of dots on a ping objective let you know how many squad mates also have pinged the same objective. So if there's more than one, likely is you have teammates trying to help you out. To ping an objective, just look at it and click the ping button. It's a little janky, this is 2042 after all, but it is very useful. Pinging down teammates lets them know that you're on your way. This option will only be available if you are capable of resing them. This is critical when going for this strategy, since I think a lot of squad mates will just try to rush the respawn screen, which is something you absolutely do not want them to do. Ping them as soon as they're down to let them know that you're on your way. This way it lets them know to wait. Ping a warning by clicking the ping button twice. This will put a red marker wherever you're aiming, and this is useful if you don't have visual of the enemy, but you want your squad to know where you expect people to be coming from. Fun fact, this can also be used while you're down to give your squad information on where you were shot from and if enemies are still around. Again, this is a little janky, but most of the time it works. As I mentioned already, as of 3.1, if you ping enemies and vehicles, this will spot them for your entire team. Unlike the rest of these pings, this actually has an effect for your entire team and not just your squad. This was added recently and I'm sure not a lot of people know about it, but it can be super useful because you also get an assist if the enemy you spotted was killed. Letting your squad and team know where enemies are is critical for obvious reasons. 
Finally, you can ping friendly vehicles to request a ride, but I've had very little success with this. Almost everyone ignores these, which is super frustrating. If you are in a vehicle and you hear an audio cue of someone saying they request a ride, just make sure you stop and wait for them. You should absolutely get used to using pings, they are so useful. Use a weapon which is effective at both long and short ranges. Since you're going wherever the squad mate takes you, you're not going to be able to pick your fighting distance, so having a weapon that can do well in both is very important. I would encourage you to take something like an assault rifle or the BSVM. If you take an SMG or a sniper, you might find that you struggle if you need to go somewhere where these weapons are not suited. Avoid players who plan on sitting back and sniping, whether that with a sniper rifle or a tank at the back of the map. There isn't a lot you can do with these players to be cooperative and still have a fun time for yourself. If you're in a squad of these players, just call it quits. Personally, I hate this style of gameplay since I don't think it's very fun or productive, so I would always just abandon squad mates doing this and pretty much never spawn on them. The easiest way to ruin this game style is to be a jerk. As soon as you get on comms or squad chat to vent your frustration, you will immediately cut off any sort of teamwork between your squad. If you're mad that your teammate didn't revive you when they had a clear opportunity, then the best way to get them to repeat that is to let them know that they messed up. In fact, I would encourage rewarding positive behaviour rather than punishing negative behaviour. When they do something good, give them a thank you by holding the ping key and selecting the thank you option, or just jump on comms and thank them personally. Remember, you're trying to smother them with kindness until they're forced to work with you. If you have to vent, and trust me, you're going to want to vent sometimes, just keep it out of the game. I went into this not knowing how well this would work. I've never seen anyone try something like this, so I had no idea what to expect. And throughout my games running this strategy, I've had some of the most successful teamwork games and it's some of the most fun I've had with randoms in a long time. It was awesome seeing people recognise that I wanted to play closely. It was very clear when this would happen too. They would stop rushing back to the respawn screen and actually start pushing objectives with me. I even had a few games where my squad was absolutely rolling over the enemy team. We would see front lines develop where my squad was holding the line between objectives and working together we managed to push each other to the top of the leaderboard. For those games I felt a real sense of camaraderie developing, something which I hadn't ever had in this game. But I've also had some of the worst games imaginable. You don't really see how horrible some people are in this game until you start paying attention to what they're really doing. Here are some of the things that made me want to pull my hair out in frustration. Squadmates continuously rushing back to the spawn screen even though I'm right there. And also not resing me while I was right underfoot. Squadmates camping an objective while other squadmates and I were trying to fight the remaining people off it. If enemies are on an objective that you're trying to capture, then try and kill them. Squadmates breaking your heart. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night. A squadmate shooting a pistol off the tower and orbital at enemies below. Enemies who were in a tank. So do I think this strategy change was worth it? Is it worth playing like this? Yes. Sometimes. But definitely not all of the time. The good times for me definitely outweighed the bad, and even when we couldn't get the full squad in on the action, teaming up with one or two squad members was an absolute blast. We were clearly more effective than just going alone, and usually after resing a squad mate once or twice, it would be clear to them that I was around to help. After that point you could feel the player trying to help out more. They would actually begin to prioritise resing me, and at some points it was clear they decided to stick with me too, which was the exact kind of result I wanted. But it was clear that if they didn't want to play the objective, then I was just wasting my time, because they would get in very few fights and we'd spend a lot of the game waiting for fights that wouldn't happen. 
In these situations, there was nothing to help my squad mates with. Using the scoreboard can help you find teammates that are actually worth sticking to and also help identify those to avoid. If you want to try this out, what I would suggest is to go into games with the plan to play like this. Force cooperative play as hard as you can. Res, follow and assist. If by a few fights in your squad mates are just not getting it, call it off. Don't waste your time. Your patience level is going to be different than mine, but to me it became clear after a certain time if it wasn't worth the effort. In those cases, just play how you regularly would and plan to try it out in the next game. I promise that you will get games which show exactly what I have mentioned, the good and the bad, but being able to quickly identify the bad and move on is something that can really help. Just don't give up too early though. If you do try this out, please let me know your experiences in the comments. I'd love to know whether this gameplay style worked out for you or if you could just not get your squad mates to team up. Also let me know what worked for you and what didn't. If you have any more suggestions to encourage cooperation, please let others know below. I do think that over my experiment I've realised that DICE really needs to add a squad swap function. I think many of my bad experiences could have been avoided by just jumping into a squad with a member who was further up the leaderboard. This way I could have avoided players who weren't playing the objective. Well, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, comment and subscribe as it greatly helps the video get promoted to other members of the Battlefield community. I was very happy to see the massively positive response to my how to actually deal with choppers video. And while this video is a little different, I hope that it is something that you enjoyed and encourages you to play with your squad more. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you helping out on the battlefield. Take care.